Here we are live at the IoT World at AI Summit. I'm with me today, I'm happy to say, is Wesley Rhodes, Vice President of Information Research and Development at Kroger. Welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. So Kroger is a mega retail uh, supermarket chain. Tell me what you guys are up to in innovation. You're doing a lot. Oh, we're into everything. <laughs> we uh, have our associate experience and we have our customer experience laid out on the wall and we are into anything that tries to achieve it. So that's anything from building sensors to advanced technologies with IOT, with AI, with digital twin, you name it, we're into it. So what would you do a digital twin of, a store? Well, there's a lot of things you can do with digital twin. So a store would make sense, right? There's physical objects there. But digital twin is a digital rep representation of not only a physical, physical objects, but anything that you can measure. So it can be of a procedure, it can be of a process of any type. So digital twin of something that I want to measure and improve on. I think that's maybe a way to think about it. So your innovation lab is filled with technology. What excites you? Uh, what excites me is what I can do next. So I'm always looking to do things with an eye toward disruption. So I love to sit around and see what everybody else is doing and kind of answer the question, can I do it a lot cheaper, a lot better, a lot faster? Can I go to something's next and then you know, beat them to the marketplace. But can I take this advanced technology and think about it differently than everybody else is thinking about it and deliver something that's amazing for our customers? That really gets us up in the morning. So is that, is that a fast follower approach or are you doing both? Oh, we definitely do both. Um, we're cautious with, with how much of the experience that we put in place at any one time. I kind of call that the precarious edge. How much do we advance to the customer so that we are giving them exciting things to do, exciting things to experience, but yet not upsetting their current experience in a large degree? So you have to incrementally add these things. But so where's most of the activity? Is it in the, the infrastructure in terms of how you're doing uh, delivery and so forth from store, store to store and distribution centers, or is it customer facing, or is it some of both? Well, it's absolutely both. We come in all areas at one time. So I try not to just revolutionize one thing. I try to move everything coordinated together uh, kind of all at one time. So better delivery, less wait time, a new experience that they didn't have before. Uh, just constantly innovating slowly, surely, incrementally, something each month, something then big things when we have a large way for them to get dramatic less wait time and that kind of thing. And do you tend to do pilots and then scale, or do you uh, try a pilot, a, or multiple pilots at a time? I normally try and solve the problem two or three ways at the same time. So I'll get teams that compete with each other to, to solve the problem. Which one can do it faster, which one can do it better, which one can do it cheaper, that kind of thing. And then we start out slowly, so we do a proof of technology. Will this technology do what we think? Then we do a proof of concept taking that technology and expanding it with interaction with the rest of the Kroger systems. We try that in a store. We get feedback from associates, feedback from our customers. And then when we think we have something great, then we'll try it in several stores and see how that works. Then we expand it to maybe 10 stores, see how that works. Then we'll try a division close to home, Cincinnati division, see how that works. Then we'll try it in different geographies because different geographies have people that have different perceptions of things. See how that works. And when, we, when we're sure that it's going to go really well, then we'll start to scale it out. So it sounds like your approach is really a, a pace rollout, basically. That's right. Uh, I'm not really a fan of 2,800 stores getting something at the same time. Well, you're, you're so big as a company, how do you even manage that? Well, we do a lot of automation. So, if something doesn't go well, I want to be able to see that and either fix it immediately or roll it right back out. So we're very big into automation. We're very big into having quick, fast feedback and immediately making a decision on what to do. So we're a big company, but we have very short decision lines. So in your innovation labs, do things surprise you often? Every day. Uh, because we, we don't give hard, fast orders to our people. But what, what I tell them is, tell me the experience you want for your loved ones. Who do you want to um, do something for? And then they go off and innovate. 
Now, we have our customer experience and our associate experience, that, that's our target. I want to innovate in those lines. But they're free to go do something surprising, and they frequently do. Um, I, I've read on some of our research on Kroger that you know so much about your customers that you know what an inside joke would be in your customers. H how do you get all this data or this insight into a customer behavior? Well, when we observe, we um, try and run our stores efficiently and that collects data. But mainly we offer services that our customers like and that comes with data. So we, we tend to take an opt-in model and we ask our customers, um, if I offered you this service, would you give us this data to help us help you? And if they opt in, then we get that data. So uh, we have a lot of different services. We have health, health and wellness. We have telenutrition, we have telehealth. We have a food as medicine type of a, an approach. Of course, we have grocery and delivery and so forth, and pharmacy. So if uh, they choose, we can, we can bring that data together and help them with any part of their lives that they wish to uh, allow us to do so. So what have you learned in terms of delivery, like last mile delivery, you've done a lot of technology, uh, robotics delivery, you know, what, where does that stand these days? Last mile delivery has its challenges, it has its economics, so we're trying a variety of different ways to offer different time frames, different modalities for them to use, and we're trying to figure out how to do that economically. We have drones, we've got robotic uh, vehicles of all shapes and sizes, we've got different ways that we're looking to uh, partner with others, so we have all types of exploration that we've got going on and we're experimenting with and we're also trying to invent. Do you, do you have to test, as a company, because you're so large, do you have to test everything just to make sure that it's not going to work? A failure is a success also. <laughs> so yes, we test absolutely everything, and we test it within the existence of the rest of the ecosystem that we have of technology. So we try and future-proof. So we not only look at it, will it work this moment, but we look at it from the expanse of time because I'm, I need to do things as, as economically as possible. Will this work with everything else that we plan to do? And if it looks like I'm going to incur a large cost that I can avoid by, take, by making another innovation, then I'll stop for a minute, make that other innovation, and then roll, roll it out less, more economically. That's how we keep our prices down. So where, where, do, where do robotics fit in the grand scheme of all this? Uh, we have robotics in a lot of places. We just make it where it's not so obvious. So we have it in our warehouses, we have it in our delivery, we have it inside the store, typically we keep it in the back. Uh, we have it where it's not intrusive. We're not a fan of having robots walk up and down the stores and get in the customer's aisle and so forth. Uh, we just try and keep it where it's efficient. So a year from now, we're sitting here having this conversation, talking about the future technology. What will we be talking about? We'll still be talking about the customer experience, we'll still be talking about the associate experience, about efficiencies in our store, about delivery. We'll just be saying, well I did this and now I'm doing that. And I try and keep the this and the that a little bit secret until we roll it out. Well I look forward to that conversation a year from now. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.